right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power, and I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first couple stories that I have for you guys today come out of C.T. Fletcher's Iron Wars, which was held this past weekend. And a couple of cool things happened there at Iron Wars. Number one was the bench press. So Julius Maddox, better known as Irregular Strength on Instagram, who is the current world record holder in the bench press, with a 744.1 pound raw bench press. He is the two-time all-time world record holder in the bench press. He attended Iron Wars. And something impressive that I thought Julius did um, was this video that you're watching right now. Shout out to the kid plot on Instagram. This is where I first saw this. Um, so he actually was benching, and he benched 675 pounds. But he did it for a double, an unexpected double. As you can tell by the, you know, the look on the faces of his spotters while he's doing it. And this is an insanely, insanely impressive feat of strength. And if you guys remember, actually, Brad Castleberry, the main reason why Brad Castleberry was being accused of using fake weights was the videos that Brad did supposedly benching this exact same weight, 675 pounds. Now, keep in mind, Brad does not compete in powerlifting meets. He is not a world record holder of any official world records. Julius Maddox is the strongest bencher in the world, and he's doing 675 for a double. So if that isn't further proof that those old videos of Brad benching were fake, then I don't know what is. If the current bench press world record holder is doing 675 for a double, I think Brad even had a video where he claimed to have done 675 for three or four reps. And again, much smaller than Julius Maddox, and probably a lot less strong. Now, also at Iron Wars, another bench press that I thought was extremely impressive and arguably the most impressive bench press done at Iron Wars was by Power Builder, Power Bodybuilder, Redcon's very own Johnny Harris, bench pressing 700 pounds. Now, the impressive thing about this bench press that Johnny Harris did was it makes him the first man in history that weighs under 300 pounds to bench press 700 pounds. Absolutely incredible. And what a weekend for strength this past weekend was. So congratulations to both Julius Maddox and Johnny Harris. And if I missed anybody that did anything impressive, extremely impressive at this Iron Wars competition this past weekend, let me know in the comment section below. There was a lot going on and I was kind of confused um, as to how the events you know, actually were being scored and judged and who was like the overall winner of this Iron Wars. Now, next up in the news, bodybuilders going Hollywood, six foot eight inch tall Martin Ford, 300 plus pounds of solid muscle, has been cast in Fast and Furious 9. I didn't even know there was actually nine films. That's a lot of Fast and Furious. That's a lot of Fast, a lot of Furious. Now, he made this announcement that he had received this role in an Instagram video with someone else who's a major superstar that's going to be in this movie, John Cena. So him and John Cena kind of did this Instagram collab where they announced that he was going to be in the movie with the caption, So the big secret is finally out. It's been the longest and hardest secret I've ever had to keep. John Cena couldn't have said it any better. The Fast Saga, it was an honor to be cast in Fast and Furious 9 alongside incredible people I have literally grown up idolizing. I can't wait to see it on the big screen and to see how the incredible action unfolds. Yes, you heard it correct. Martin Ford is in Fast and Furious 9, something I never thought I would say. Love to my incredible team and the best agency around. So congratulations to Martin Ford. A very big deal. Um, very mainstream role there in Fast and Furious 9. Now, next up in the news here, we have Patrick Moore. Patrick Moore has been doing a very good job of keeping fans updated on how he's looking on his road to the 2020 Arnold Classic. Again, I'll say it again, and I've said it many times before, Patrick Moore, one of my favorites for the 2020 Arnold Classic. I think he's going to be like the dark horse of the show. I think he's going to be top six. Now, in this video you're watching right here, Patrick Moore is training arms, specifically doing rope pushdowns for triceps. Now, Patrick has insane arms, but one bodybuilder that comes to mind that has even more insane arms than Patrick, probably more insane arms than almost anybody in the IFBB with the exception of Rolly Winkler, Seven-time Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath, who happens to be, for this past weekend at least, the training partner of Patrick Moore. 
So Patrick Moore was out there at Arm Bruce Pro Gym training with Phil, getting some pointers, getting some tips and tricks from the seven-time Mr. Olympia. Uh, but Phil Heath and Patrick Moore's updates, you get to see a little bit of a glimpse of how Phil is looking right now. Now, we haven't seen Phil on stage since the 2018 Mr. Olympia. A little over a year, actually probably closer to a year and a half now since we've seen Phil on stage. And he's really been kind of quiet lately. Now, we got this talk about this documentary, the potential of him doing Athleticon, but in this video series from Patrick Moore on his story, you really get a good idea of what Phil is looking like. And we pretty much knew this. I mean, Phil, he's a pro, and he's shown absolutely no sign of slowing down. And I think more importantly, no sign of being a bodybuilder that's retired or on the road to retirement. He looks every bit of the Phil Heath that could be about to get ready for a contest. Now, obviously, in these videos, he's not in contest shape or anything, but he looks to be, from a size standpoint, every bit of the Phil Heath we're used to seeing. And after not seeing Phil for a while, you almost kind of forget how insanely round in 3D the muscle bellies on Phil Heath really are. I mean, you look at Phil's arms, and you look at him doing these curls in this video, and you really see what the wow factor was that set Phil apart from so many other bodybuilders. Now, we've had all this talk in the past about Phil's midsection, and I'm sure that's going to be the big question when Phil comes back is, is he going to fix it? Is he going to have it fixed or not? And obviously, in these videos, he's got a shirt on, so you can't see his midsection. But looking at just what you can see, the delts, the arms, even the pecs, where he's been criticized before for not having the biggest pecs. Just training in a tank top in the gym, you can see what set Phil apart from every other bodybuilder, and that's why he is a seven-time Mr. Olympia. Love him or hate him, Phil really did have kind of that magical quality to his physique that you just don't see every day, and you rarely see even in professional bodybuilding. And I think a lot of the qualities that Phil has are qualities that would translate very well over to Patrick Moore. Now, Patrick Moore is a lot different than Phil in the sense that he, a lot of his strong points come from his very tight, tapered midsection and the aesthetic look to his physique. But one of the things that he is lacking is that quality that Phil has, just a certain roundness and fullness to the muscle. Now, he does have really good arms. But if you could take some of the best qualities of Patrick and some of the best qualities of Phil and kind of combine them into one bodybuilder, you would have a really serious threat on any pro bodybuilding stage. So I think... Phil and Patrick working together, whether Phil is just a friend or a mentor or just helping him train, could you imagine kind of a combination of those two physiques, how dangerous that would be? So it's kind of cool to see these two working together because they are so different, but at the same time, they do have some similarities and what makes each of them good is different. But the main two takeaways and the main two points that I wanted to get across with this particular story is number one, Patrick Moore looking dangerous as ever going into the 2020 Arnold Classic, and number two, Phil Heath certainly, to me, does not look like a bodybuilder that's on the road to retirement. And I, for one, am actually really excited at the prospect of Athleticon. I mean, it brings a level of excitement to bodybuilding that we really haven't had in a while. This new show, what could it be? It could be, you know, you could have anybody compete at this show. And I think when they finally drop the official competitor list for Athleticon, I think it's going to be an amazing competitor list. And I think a lot of people are going to flock to see this show. I'm already planning out which shows I'm going to in 2020. And Athleticon is right at the top of my list of shows that I want to go to, the first ever Athleticon. I think the lineup's going to be crazy, and I really think when they announce this list, it's going to be crazy names like Phil Heath. Names that you would typically only see on an Olympia lineup and names that you haven't seen in a while. These are the type of things that make me excited to cover bodybuilding. It, it just makes me you know, kind of have a new enthusiasm for it. And who wouldn't like to have another contest that's kind of similar to the Arnold Classic? I mean, The Rock is having... I believe an MMA UFC specifically is going to have an event there. There's going to be other sporting events. So it sounds like it's going to be an expo in the same fashion of the Arnold Classic. And it's going to have kind of the same star power behind it as the Arnold Classic has. And it's going to be like a spectacle. It's going to be a big event, not just a bodybuilding weekend. It's going to be something for you know people of all walks of life that are interested in fitness. Um, and that's what I'm excited about is to have something else cool to go to like the Arnold Classic. I think from an expo standpoint, the Arnold Classic has done it right for so many years. I think this will be like my 10th or 11th Arnold Classic in a row that I go to this year. So I'm definitely hoping that Athleticon is going to be something in that same fashion. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. How do you think Athleticon is going to do? It's coming up in October. Now next up in the news here, a little bit of pro wrestling news. I was watching the Royal Rumble last night, WWE's second biggest event, you could argue. 
Man, I know a lot of you guys are pro wrestling fans. I used to do quite a few videos on pro wrestlers, but I really haven't been watching it much lately. Probably the last wrestling event I watched was probably WrestleMania last year. But like a lot of you guys, I'm a millennial. I'm in my 20s. Um, I started watching wrestling back in like the early 2000s, and one of the guys that I really enjoyed watching was Edge, the rated R superstar. So one of the things that happened last night at Royal Rumble that I thought was probably the coolest thing was the in-ring return of Edge after a nine-year hiatus. I mean, he was told he wasn't even able to wrestle again. Um, so it was cool to see him back, and he made it to like the final three of the Royal Rumble. And I know that wrestling is a work and it's scripted, but still, I think it was a cool story to have Edge come back at the Royal Rumble. And I wanted to include it in this video for nostalgic sake. You know I like nostalgia on this channel, old school bodybuilding stuff, and nothing to me is more nostalgic than a you know childhood favorite wrestler coming back in 2020. Now I know we got off to a rough start to the year with the passing of Kobe Bryant and of course his 13 year old daughter unfortunately and nine others that passed away in that helicopter crash yesterday. But I just wanted to say that I love you all and if you're watching this video and listening to this video then that means you're blessed to be alive right now and have another day um, and we should all be grateful for that. So as always thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you have not already and as always Nick Strength and Power, signing out.